What up, YouTube? It's your boy Fatal J back again with another video. Yes, sir. Spin that gando. As you shall already know. Hey, last night I went to go see the Joker movie. And I'm going to let you guys know right now. This is the spoilers review. But I'm not like those other YouTubers. No, no, sir. You know, they'll tell you right at this point. If you don't want to hear this, make sure you leave. No, sir, I don't want you to leave. Just put me on mute and watch my face aneurysms just like Bill Cosby. Because I'm going to be doing that through the whole video. But check this out. Let's get it in. This movie here, I don't want to sound like those media groups and those SJW groups, but I'm going to be truthful with you. If you're not in a right mental state, this might not be the right movie for you because it might bring back flashbacks. It might bring back uh, inspirations. It might give you inspirations of what you need to be doing. This movie, when I walked out of it, I felt lightheaded. I went on this brutal mental journey with Arthur, a.k.a. the Joker. This movie was a trip. He was mentally unstable. He had mentally unstable relationships with his therapist, with his mom, with his co-workers, and his so-called girlfriend. Yeah, that's right. In this movie, the Joker had a girlfriend. Matter of fact, she lived in the same apartment complex as him. Pick this out. You watched him through the whole movie going through this relationship and then guess what towards the end of the movie <laughs> he made her up he made her up to the point this is how they revealed it in the movie he broke into her apartment she shocked an alarm and said what are you doing up in the air this was his reply and it blew my mind when he said he said, I'm having a bad day. She said, please get out of here. To me, that was the turning point of the whole movie. That was the shocker of the entire movie. Now, you got other shockers, too. For instance, the Joker had a co-worker buddy who was trying to give him inspiration. He was telling him, you need to stand up for yourself because the Joker had got beat up earlier in the movie. He said, you need to take up, take, take up for yourself. He gave him a gun. Okay? This was another turning point in the movie. My boy was dancing around with the gun in, the, in his apartment. He even shot it by accident. Then he was on the train with these three college douchebags. Shot all them up. Straight murdered them. When he murdered these douchebags, that gave him inspiration, motivation to fulfill what he really was in the inside. Yeah. I'm telling you, at the end of the day, this movie is not what you think it is. So please watch with caution. This was another turning point in the movie that blew my mind. So the guy that gave him the gun, the guy that gave him this power, so to say, because this is very metaphorical, too. He came to the apartment to check on the Joker because word on the street, Arthur, a.k.a. Joker, Everybody pretty much had a assumption that he had killed them dudes. He went and visited them and told them the police has been watching me. They've been asking me questions. He said, what's going on? Before he could even finish a sentence, Joker started bashing his head into the wall. Brains, matter, and everything. A little, little guy, I'm not going to say midget. A little guy was watching, scared to freaking death. And this movie is so mentally crazy. They made it funny. When the midget was trying to run out of the, the apartment, but he couldn't reach the lock. <laughs> he couldn't reach the lock. Now, what I like about this movie is how they tied in uh, Bruce Wayne and Thomas Wayne. I'm not too sure if I like how they made Thomas Wayne look. Because they made Thomas Wayne look like a deuce bad too. Thomas Wayne was always a good guy and an inspirational person to Bruce Wayne. But I would take it for this movie because we're viewing this movie through the eyes of Joker. Joaquin Phoenix, at the end of the day, carried this movie. I've never seen one actor 
carry a whole freaking movie on their own, on their own, and do a flawless victory. He did a flawless victory. He killed it. He killed it. But I like the tie in they did with Bruce Wayne uh, when he was a little boy. I thought it was going to be so freaking lame if they would have made the Joker and Bruce Wayne ended up being uh, brothers. They tried to hint at that, but it wasn't true because Joker's mom, she lied to Arthur, a.k.a. Joker, as if Thomas Wayne slept with her and gave birth to Joker. But Joker ended up being adopted. I told you I was going to give you all a lot of spoilers. And I was going to jam pack it real quickly and real fastly. And fastly ain't even a freaking word. Back to Bruce Wayne. I'm trying to get to this point. I really wish that the Matt Reeves Batman that we get, I really hope and I really wish that that little Bruce Wayne that we seen end up being Robert Pattinson. It will only be right. How Robert Pattinson grew up to be Bruce Wayne. How Joaquin Phoenix played the Joker. Because I'm going to tell y'all, a lot of people been asking this. Is Joaquin Phoenix, did he do a better job than Heath Ledger? Two different movies in my opinion. And I'm going to put it like this for my people who haven't seen it yet. If he didn't beat Heath Ledger, then guess what? He came darn well close. Let me know in the comment section, what did you think about this movie? Did you think it was dope? Did you think it was crazy or you hated it? And do you think, if you've seen it, my people, do you think Heath, Heath Ledger still has the crown? Let me know in the comments. Get back at your boy, Fatal J. And you can have it your way. Bow-headed man from Ninja Turtles, please take me out. Ninja, vanish!